What is up guys? And welcome back to another Bojinjin vlog. Um, <laughs> how you're doing? Uh, it is once again very, very hot. Um, and so, uh, we'll see how I do today because I don't actually have any water with me, you know, rookie error. Um, but regardless, I hope you're doing well. Um, today's entry, I have, I have something, I guess, um, interesting, you know, as I hope it always is on my channel. You know, maybe sometimes it isn't, but like, I'll leave that up to you. But, um, yeah, so funnily enough, like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm also kind of, you might see my, my kind of overall presentation is a little bit sweaty, you know, shall we say, and, and that's because I just randomly decided to, to kind of do a bit of exploring. Um, I, you know, when, when it gets to about summertime and the weather gets better, um, I tend to get an itch to kind of go and explore around, you know, East London, Essex, you know, or where, wherever tickles my fancy, really. And basically, uh, I was just at a place called Chafford Gorges, which is, um, it's, it's right on the kind of edge of Essex, I guess, right? You know, my geography is not terrific, but like, um, there's a, um, it's right next to Greys in, in Essex and, um, also the Lakeside Shopping Centre. Um, the into um, like sort of shopping center and like I was just walking you know around there it's it's basically like this nature reserve um, like public park place and I was just having a walk around and I did a bit of running as well right um, and that's why I look you know kind of a bit sweaty right now but anyway a bit of a long introduction as usual um, so yeah you know if, all of the footage I shot in this video will be from that, right? And uh, yeah, it's uh, the last time I did this was last year in summer, so I don't know. I think I might try and do this more often because it's helpful for me because I get to kind of explore and like break out of my fucking self imposed, like <laughs> you know, um, like uh, seclusion, you know, <laughs> sometimes and just get out and, and explore, um, explore places. And also, you know, it's just it's just makes for an interesting kind of a thing in these videos if I can kind of shoot things like, you know, that are not <laughs> like my car and my flat. Anyway, long introduction over. Um, today's entry, I want to talk about... Um, I want to talk about something that is of great contention in today's kind of... Let's say political climate, although it really extends beyond politics in, in terms of like, you know, um, political beliefs and like physical government and things of that nature, right? Um, and that thing is what is known as ideological possession, right? So I did an entry uh, about the struggles of being an artist like a few entries ago, and the source of that was a, a fellow named Jordan Peterson, right, who is, like, now, like, super famous, really, internet famous, right, you know, he, um, if you don't know who he is, yeah, he, he's a professor, a professor of psychology from the University of Toronto, and just go, just Google or, or search his name on YouTube, and you will find everything you need to know about him, but, like, he's super famous now as, like, you know, part of this, this intellectual dark web, or, like, this intelli intelligentsia, moving into the future, right, and he talks about, you know, struggles of being an artist, but he also talks about, you know, a central topic, you know, kind of like, in what he, uh, in, like, that, that he discusses, right, when he has interviews and talks of other people, is this idea of ideological possession, right, so, ideological possession just off the bat right in case you don't know right um is you know in very simple terms it means when you believe in something and that belief becomes kind of absolute in your thinking really right you know because the world that we find ourselves in today is a world of really like ideologies right you know particularly if you live in the west right you know maybe in other places in the world 
like it's not so apparent, right? But like definitely in the West, you know, and in particular, you know, my own country, the United Kingdom, and you know, the United States, um, you know, it, it's a very, you know, ideologically dominated landscape, you know, particularly on the internet, right? Um, yeah. Really, I'm, I'm speaking, you know, like mostly about the internet. Um, but also, you know, in, in, you know, spheres like politics and, you know, and academia, I guess, right? Um, but like, you know, um, it's difficult the, nowadays to kind of not be influenced by ideologies, right? You know, ideologies, of course, being just like beliefs, right? You know, like, what kind of person are you? Are you a... Um, are you a liberal? Are you a, con a conservative? Are you in favor of inserts, whatever position, right? Are you a, you know, a feminist or woman's rights activist? Or not really an activist, like not necessarily an activist, but like pro pro not even a proponent, but like supporter, you know, a woman rights supporter. You know, are you anti whatever, you know, um, are you pro whatever, right? You know, pro I don't know, like gay marriage. You know, just pl plucking like some random controversial issue out of the air. You know, um, are you? Yeah, you know, um, are you um, pro capitalism? Capitalism? Are you anti capitalism? Are you social? Are you pro socialism? Are you pro? Um, yeah, you know, conservatism, right, which is really the opposite of socialism, but, like, you know, at least politically speaking, but, um, you know, it's like, there are many positions out there, and it's almost as if, like, it's this, this, like, kind of, like, um, universal football match, let's just say, right, or insert whatever other sport analogy you want, and you have to pick a side, right, and you tend to pick the side that you are more represented by, right? You know, if you're kind of not as, let's say, high, right, in, in like the kind of global economy, like you're not fucking rich basically, right? Then you might be more inclined towards socialism, right? Um, you know, if, but if you happen to be someone who is well off, you know, and has like a business legacy or like, you know, has investments, you know, in, the kind of economical landscape, then you might be more conservative, you know, um, generally speaking, you know, of course, it's not, that's not like absolutely going to be the case, but, you know, just, you know, using that as an example, right? And as such, you know, if you're male, right, you know, you might be kind of inclined to, um, or, okay, well, if you're female, you might be inclined to be feminist, right? Or like to, you know, to kind of, um, be a supporter of women's rights and, you know, equality of outcome and equal opportunities for women and the prevention of the victimization and the exploitation of women, right? Similarly, if you're a man, like, you might go for MGTOW, you know, or like, you know, um, things of that nature, um, you know. Or indeed you might be a feminist, right? You know, there are, I'm sure there are plenty of male feminists out there. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it, it's like, in a way, it's kind of natural, I suppose, to, to, to kind of, like, subscribe to ideologies today, because it's just like, in a, in a sense, it's kind of like a football game or like any other sport. It's like, who, which team do you support, right? And, and, and it's like, you know, it's easy to just say, I support this team, right? Because, I don't know, they're my home team or, like, I just like the players in it, or like I like the way the the team's managed, or I I like the fact that they win a lot, you know, you know, for whatever whatever reason, right? It's just easy to be like, okay, you know, that's the whole point, right, of a sports game, is like it's a competition between two entities, and you get to pick one and cheer that one on, and then like kind of like go through like the you know the, the drama of like who's gonna win, you know, and then when you win, it's like ah, and then when they lose, it's like ah, you know, it's the same kind of you know, pattern, I suppose, in, in terms of, like, what, what drives us towards adopting ideologies, right? And, like, ideologies, 
you know, kind of going deeper than that are kind of necessary, right? You know, it, it's like, it's a very necessary component to our understanding of like various issues and just life in general, right? You know, um, and as such, you know, it, it, it would be, you know, I'll start off by saying that it would be a mistake to say that the solution, you know, to, to like this, this kind of like, I guess, disease, you know, even though like even that word I don't really like, but like the problem of ideological possession, you know, would not be readily solved by like getting rid of ideologies, right? Because ideologies are, are necessary, you know, they are very important to our understanding and just today's world, right? You know, you know, it, it's like we all get started on this, call it whatever you want, spiritual journey, personal development journey, um, awakening, right, maturation, you know, growing up, right, you know, kind of developing our own thinking, you know, all of that comes from, like, analyzing and trying on different ideologies, right, you know, and you kind of see what fits for you, and as you kind of journey along, right, and this is the thing, is that, like, you know, if you avoid being possessed by these ideologies, which I'll, ex I'll go into a bit deeper in a second, right, then you will also see the both the pros and the cons of that ideology, right? And the pros and cons of ideologies, period, right? So what causes ideological possession, right? You know, what, what kind of causes people to kind of like, um, just like be possessed, right? You know, ideological possession, like, or like be like kind of have their whole entire kind of like raison d'etre and kind of like, just like waking consciousness, like kind of enmeshed in like this pursuit of like the, the propagation of ideologies, right? Well, it's, it's fear really, you know, it's like, and, uh, and it's like, yeah, fear, fear comes from a great number of places, right? You know, like fear comes from others, you know, people that we don't understand. Fear comes from, you know, a feeling of inadequacy in ourselves, you know, to succeed and to live a good life. Fear comes from just a great number of places, but like, you know, to chalk it all, like to, to kind of like wrap it all together, right? Life is, okay, is at times, you know, yeah, you know, maybe most of the time, right? It, it's, it's painful and scary, right? And you know, without something like a place of belonging, which is what ideologies really pose for us, then like you feel naked in the middle of a battlefield with like fucking shells flying all over the place and, and like fucking bullets whizzing past your face and you're like, oh, whoa, what's happening? And it's like, of course, you know, in that situation, like we, 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 we would venture out, we, we, we would kind of like, take on board ideologies because they are a they are kind of a symbol of belonging they give context to your life and the suffering of your life right the pain in your life and it makes you feel like you're part of a a moving kind of uh, force right or a family right so like that's really why you know and and as, and, and like i said right you know the the kind of the adoption of ideologies is necessary for us to build understanding around life, right? However, like, you know, if we kind of are not careful, right, then we kind of become like enmeshed, you know, conjoined with our beliefs. You know, with our ideas, because that's what ideology means, really. It means idea, right? Same root word. You know, and those ideas, you know, kind of shackle us. And they rob us of our, like, humanity, really, right? Um, and like, like I said, right? 
when you when you kind of like subscribe to an ideology for long enough, right? As long as you keep your eyes open, right? Then you will see that there are pros and cons to it, right? And that really applies to everything in life, right? But like you know, specifically you know with like, or yeah, specifically with ideologies, right? You will come to see the pros and cons of ideologies, right? So. There is a side to ideologies. Let's take, I don't know, I'm kind of a bit wary because like ideology, like like kind of like discussing it, ideologies can be a very sensitive topic, right? Um, so, um, okay, right. So, I guess, yeah, like liberalism versus conservatism is a good example, right? Um, you know, whether you're left wing, whether you're left-winged in, in terms of, like, how you would like things to be in society, or whether you're right-winged, right? Um, you know, traditionally, there has always been a dichotomy, right? You know, on the left, there are people who say that, you know, there are people who suffer, you know, there are people who are misrepresented, disenfranchised, and there isn't enough attention and care being, being funneled to these misrepresented, misrepresented and disenfranchised people, right? You know, there's too much inequality in society, right? There are people who are starving, you know, relatively speaking, of course, right? You know, because, hey, I live in the UK. If you live in the Western world, you're probably better off than a lot of people, right? But like, you know, relatively speaking, there's a lot of poverty out there, right? And there are people who are misrepresented. And like, if, if power and resources were just, you know, redistributed, then, like, a lot of those people could, could lift themselves out of poverty and become, like, productive members of society, right? And that's the left-wing argument. And, and it's, like, it's a very compassionate argument, you know? Compassion is, is at the heart, really, of the left-wing um, perspective, right? You know? And that's the pro of it, right? Um, similarly, on the right wing, you know, um, on the right, on the right wing, you know, if pe people are like, well, we need a structure in place. Are you saying we should just destroy all of the structures that exist in society? Because that would kind of be a bad move. Because what you're not seeing, you know, in <laughs> in your like kind of like blind, like compassionate, like kind of tirade, you know, is that like. These systems exist, and th they're the systems that brought society to where it is now, right? You know, sis the society would not run without these, right? You know, and it's, and you know, there's always the danger, right? That like, if you give people things for nothing, that they'll take advantage of it, right? And it would have the opposite effect of what you're claiming, right? You know, people will get lazier, right? And that, you know, we should, we should, be careful in, in like kind of like just being too indiscriminate you know like people who work hard and work smart they deserve to be to have power right you know isn't that like that's my right right as a hard-working um and you know and, and conscious individual like conscientious right you know my hard work should be reflected in like in my rights in my privileges and in just what I like a life that is mine, right? And it's and it's mine because I worked for it, right? And that's the right wing kind of approach, right? You know, and those are the you know, and 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 it's like okay, right? But like there are cons to both of those too, right? You know, like I I kind of explained the left wing con in the right wing argument, right? It's like well, you know, if you're too indiscriminate, like, you know, then like what happens to these structures, these hierarchies, right, that you're saying are all evil, you know, but, like, you were blind to the fact that, like, these hierarchies kind of, like, facilitated an individual in society to play this game, you know, the societal game, this, like, career game where they have an opportunity to, like, improve their lives and to get more, to, to get more money, right, more opportunities, right? You'll just say, you'll just, you say, okay, fuck that. We're just going to give everything the same thing, right? And there are countless, you know, examples, you know, of, like, 
times when people have tried this approach, right, and they enforced it, and it didn't turn out anything like, you know, people had hoped, you know. And, like, it's like, I'm not saying the thing is, like, I'm not saying that the left wing aren't, comp like, that, like, you know, like, they're not, they do have compassion in mind, right? But anyway, let me, let me kind of uh, pace myself, right? It's hot today, so... <laughs> Um, so anyway, yeah, so, and the right wing, um, kind of conservative approach has its problems too, right? It has its cons, right? You know, it's like, if you do, if you do not, you know, pay attention to like the growing poverty in the world, to the growing inequality in the world and inequality becomes too pronounced, then like, guess what? People are going to start rebelling, right? People are going to start rebelling, you know, like they're going to destroy the systems because you give them no choice, right? It's not, it's not, it's no longer a, you know, we would like to see the systems go. It's more like, fuck the system. Let's fucking destroy it, right? So, and not only that, right? Not only will that be the case, but also there are productive members in society who are truly kind of hampered by their financial lack of abundance, right? You know, and were they only given, you know, like just a leg up, then they would become productive members of society, right? And like, you wouldn't see so much, you know, like you wouldn't, like there'd, there'd be better things that come out of that, right? So, you know, who you are, like, you know, which part, which, well, which ideology, liberalism or conservatism resonates with you more as a person, you'll tend to side with that ideology, right? But, like, you have to be open to, like, the, the cons of that ideology. And, by extension, the cons of ideologies in general, right? So... I, I did an entry that I'll link at the end, on the end screen of this entry, right? I did an entry um, called The King and the Subject, right? And even though, like, the term and the idea, ideolo ideo bleh, ideological possession had not come into my consciousness then, because that was a while ago, right? I, I was talking about this very thing, right? So, like, we've, ex we've talked about what ideologies are, why they're both important and dangerous, and why we tend to be possessed by them when we inevitably try them on for size, right? Because, you know, we live in a painful world sometimes, and, like, it's good to know, to have an idea of who we are and what we're part of, and, you know, and, and being belonging to something, right? So let's talk about now, like, the, the actual physical application of this. How do we ourselves, you know, once we've recognized that we're under the effects of ideological possession, right, how do we um, break free from it, right? And like, I feel that that question actually is redundant, right? So like, apologies for that. But the reason I say that is because like, the kind of person, like if you're the kind of person who has who who has who is aware to the degree that you might be under the influence of ideolo ideological possession, then you probably it, it's something that organically leads you to to knowing what the solution is. It's, it's that kind of a thing, because someone who isn't ready to like accept that they are ideologically possessed, you know, like they wouldn't be watching this video, right? It's like, once you get to the, you know, this is the thing, right? It's like, once you get to the realization that you are under the effects of ideological position, or you, you've come to understand what ideological position is, and you're not, you're no longer using it as a weapon to, like, subconsciously try to destroy the opposing ideology, because that's part of it, right? You know, that's what happens, right? So, people who are ide ideological possessed, you know, it's all about defeating the other side, right? You know, beat the other team. We need to win, right? It's not about actual progression. It's not about, you know, understanding um, or, or humanity, right? This is, this is what I mean. You are in this rigid uh, 
machination of like of, of like thought and beliefs that is is subconscious to you trying to destroy the other team right and like you will do all kinds of like self deception right and denial and you will rationalize like you know no I, I'm just trying I'm just I want equality I want fairness I want understanding you know it's just that those fuckers don't understand and it's like that's that's it that's the sign right and you're blind to that until you see the fault in like ideological possession and therefore the fault in yourself right so it's like a painful thing right it's like anything that's difficult you know like we all have faults and the reason that they're faults really is because like to face them and to see how they make us less effective or not as good people as we once thought you know that we're flawed in some way that's painful right but like if you're already someone who like un who has been through this pain then like the next step is pretty easy right so like yeah so i guess this is kind of redundant but regardless um yeah how do we do it right so what i explained in that king and subject entry is that like we're born either kings or subjects, right? You know, some of us are born into great situations, right? And actually, I want to tack something onto this, right? This is something I, I wanted to talk about at some point, but let me finish this point first. So, like, some of us are born kings, aka rich, you know, in a great family, you know, with not really any worries, right? And some of us, most of us, were born as subjects, aka, like, not so rich, not in such a good family situation or like physical situation right and you grow up and that kind of becomes your identity right you know like it's not just with that right king and the subject is is like kind of like a an analogy for like just like these kind of dichot the these um dualities you know like the person who's attractive and the person who isn't attractive the person who is competent and confident and the person who is incom incompetent and not confident right the person who is um alpha and the person who's beta right um you know the person who's cool the people who are cool and the people who are not cool right and it's like like i wish i was more like this right and it's like that's the thought of like the the you know again like the, the whole left right kind of a thing applies to this right you know if you're like the people who are misrepresented and like got the short end like the short straw drew the straw the short straw they're the ones who kick up a fuss because it's like it's not fair they got this you know and it's not fair you know i wish i was like that right it's, it sucks to be me it sucks no one understands right and then the right wing cool people are like why are you tripping out bro you know it's like i don't want to deal with you you know it's like hey like you trying to attack me personally i couldn't help the fact that i was born rich or attractive or cool you know are you saying it's my fault get get out of here right you know why are you attacking me fuck you right you know like i have a right to be me you know you know i'm sorry that you're the, that you didn't have these things but like it, it doesn't mean that like i did it on purpose to like to to vent to um to, to to like you know antagonize you or whatever right and so you, you see this dynamic but like the thing is right that like you or rather that is just a perspective that was my point in that entry is like you can imagine yourself as the king if you were the subject your whole life hell you might even have a wonderful experience, like this this thing that happens sometime in your life, where like your the roles are reversed, right? For so like in that entry, I gave an example of like how like I was always like a like a dependent, or I should say codependent person who like was useless and like you know didn't want to offend anyone and like but was powerless and just didn't want anyone to hate me. You know, I'm just I just I'm just not confident and I'm not like. I'm not competent at things, you know, but like, I'll be a nice guy, you know, I'm a nice guy, like, you know, that, that kind of thing, right? Um, but then like, when I get, when I grew up, and I was in like, when I was working, right, when I was working jobs, and I was in a team, 
there was there was one point where like I became someone who was like semi competent. Like I knew what I was doing. After like strings, you know, because we've all been in them, right? Strings of jobs where like you fuck up and you look like a you look like a, an idiot, right? Because you're just inexperienced and like you don't have the the you haven't matured enough to see like like the kind of difference of employment versus education, right? It's it's more of a no bullshit competitive environment, you know, whereas like education is like, you know, everyone's just friends and everyone's just passing exams and shit, right? No, it's like your actions count, right? And like, it's kind of competitive. Okay. If you don't do your job, right, you're out of there, right? So, you know, after, after that process, right, I eventually became semi-competent in, in, in work, right? And like, it flipped for me because I started to see other people who were younger than me, for example, or like less competent and confident than me. And they started to do the same thing to me that I always used to do to my friends, right? And that was a mind fuck, right? That was like, what the fuck? Like it, like, it just like, it blew my mind because I was like, all throughout my, you know, childhood, I was like, I'm, I'm useless and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just a nice guy, right? And then like some, all of a sudden I'm getting pissed off at these people who are like, just like, I can't do this. I'm like, yes, you can. You know, do you want me to give you better instructions? Right? <laughs> like, like the important thing is you learn, you know, I'm not trying to be mean to you. It's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's like a thing you do, right? Here's the procedure to do it, right? You know, just get on and do it. And like, they'll come back and they're like, I don't know how to do it. I'm like, oh my God, right? It's like, it, it flipped. I was like, what the fuck, right? And like, at that point I realized that like, who you think you are is just a perception, right? And if it's just a perception, aka it's changeable, then that means that like there's a there's, there's there's a chance that you could actually improve your life, right? You know, maybe you won't be like this empowered and like disenfranchised your whole life. Maybe that was just a holding pattern that you had. People call it limiting beliefs, right? That you had it, you know, that you had, and now you realize, oh wait, it's just. Some, it's just like a pattern that I got into, that I got used to, you know? I just got used to the fact that, like, I was useless and, and like, beta and, like, just nice, you know? And it's like, believe me, right, you know? Believe me, like, it was hard to make that transition, like, you know? It was hard. It still is hard. But, like, I learned that, like, uh, uh, like, identities and the things, the engines behind those identities, aka ideas or ideologies, they are just a perspective, right? And so, once you go through that enough, you, and you start to proactively try on different perspectives, because you're like, okay, well, you know what? I used to think that I was a useless, not confident, not aggressive person, not assertive, right? But then that got smashed, right? And like, something else got, like, you know, then, then I thought I wasn't manly, right? Or like, I wasn't, uh, I, I could, I couldn't do X, I wasn't sporty or what, and so you know, I wasn't extrovert, you know, whatever problem that you have, right? Then I looked at that and I, I'm also starting to build on that. Like, it's like, I don't feel that identified with being someone who's antisocial anymore, right? who can't talk to people, who, who's like beneath everyone, who, who lacks confidence, because I broke that initial thing, then I'm on my way to break this next one, and then with each subsequent like identi identification that you have with an ideology, you become less attached to it, right? So like one of my tenets, if you will, on this channel is build your perspective, right? And that is basically this, right? It's like there are loads of different ways of thinking, right? And like, even the things that you cherish, right? I'm an artist, you know, which is something that I cherish. It's like, there's, there's even a counter kind of ideology to that. And there's, a, there's things that, that kind of lay, that lie in that ideology that would be of use to me if I could just put down my artistic, artsy fartsy, I'm a creative like kind of an identity down for a second and be like, okay, can, but can I do business, right? But can I, can I be gangster? <laughs> like I, you know, I am the furthest, 
that anyone could be from being street, right? You know, it's like, I'm like, I could be a lot of, like, I could see myself doing a lot of things, but like, I'm really not street, <laughs> you know? There's probably more stuff to it, but like, yeah, it's just like, look at me. I'm street fam. Yeah, mother like, I'm not street, you know? There've been videos where like, I have put on like a, like a fake thing, but like, I'm not street, right? But like, <laughs> but like, I could gain something from that if I could just like, try to understand it, you know? And see where, like, I'm fucking up with my current, you know, identification, right? You know, if, like, if you're, if you're liberal, right, if you're, if you're left-wing and you're like, fuck the establishment, they're all money-grubbing cunts, you know, they don't give a shit about any of us down here, right? They should just fucking give us their money, because fuck them, right? And it's like, what are you, okay, but, like, do you have aspirations? Like, what are you going to do? If, let's say, they doled out a, un a universal basic income and everyone has enough for housing and, and food for the rest of their lives or foreseeable future, like, what would you do? You know? Would you s then do art? W would you become an artist? You know? <laughs> like, like me? Like, would you invest? Would you um, do enterprise, right? Would you try and contribute in some way? Or would you sit at home and drink beer and watch telly, you know, what you do now, right? It's like, okay, you know, yeah, okay, fair enough, right? You know, inequality sucks, you know, I'm part of it. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm part of it, right? I'm like, I wish I was rich, or I wish I was more talented and shit. It's like, yeah, I guess, but like, at the end of it, it's like, kind of, you... <sighs> What do you, what do you expect, you know? Well, there's that, and also like, okay, but like, let's say that you did get that money. What would you do? Like, oh, I would help the world. How would you help the world? I don't know, I, I'd, find, I'd go out and find cool people and would do stuff. What stuff? You know, what? What stuff? Like, you know, it's like, there has to be something in your mind, you know? Doesn't mean you need a, an exact plan right now, but it's like, you know, hey, like, maybe you start a charity. You know, maybe you're already doing something towards that. In which case, people would believe you, right? But it's like, no, I'd help the world, I'd invest. It's like, how would you do that, right? So it's like, okay. So like, when you move in that direction, like, you know, when you start to see the folly in your like, kind of like, I'm just, uh, no, equality, yeah! But like, you're sat, but you sit at home and you do fuck all, all right? It's like, when you start to actually try and do something with your life, you start to see the right wing perspective. Because you're working hard and you're like, oh shit, I have to work fucking hard for this money. I have to work fucking hard for this dream. Wouldn't it suck if someone, if some idiot came along and was like, fuck this guy, he took our money. He took, he took our opportunities. What a dickhead, he should give us his money. It's like, you would understand how a conservative person feels, right? Similarly, if you're on the right side of things, it's like, okay, like, you like, you have your mansion, shh, you have your cars, and you're just balling, and you're doing business, and you're fucking getting things done, and you're like, you met the queen yesterday, <laughs> you know, uh, mum, <laughs> you know, and like, you're all over the place, and you're like, just killing it, right? And you are, and you're wealthy, and you're surrounded by good people, and you're doing well, right? You know, and you're in that little bubble, right? But it's like, okay. Like, what next, right? You know, you might be tempted to just continue to like, um, do your wealthy thing, right? Your conservative thing. But it's like, take a walk, like outside of your neighborhood, right? Drive out of Beverly Hills or like fucking, I don't know, um, where's a rich part in London? Uh, Victoria, you know, South Kensington. Drive out for 15 minutes, right, into like fucking Battersea or like um, Mile End, right, Commercial Road, right, like, and just see how, how, like, how much poverty there is, right, and like, you might be tempted to like just turn your nose up to that shit and be like, oh, look at these lazy, unmotivated, unambitious, uneducated people, I'm so above them, but it's like, well, you still have to drive through that road sometimes, right? What, are you gonna turn a blind eye to that for the rest of your fucking life, 
right? And not, and not only that, but are you going to turn a blind eye to the fact that maybe some of those people really would be, like, upstanding, contributive citizens, if only they had an opportunity? Would it not also feel good if, like, instead of feeling like you're above them and, like, you know, hell, they just didn't work hard enough, you know, blah, 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 you know, they're, like, disgusting and uncouth and, you know, what if you could help them, right? And what if they could appreciate you and they become, like, a new, um, yeah, you know, like, a new dimension to your life, right? Because you're around all of these, like, you know, high-class you know, like, rich people all the time, right? And they're all civilized, right? And, like, but, like, you know, they do business, and they do business, and they do business, right? And they do business, and you have a wedding, right? Or some kind of opening ceremony from time to time, and you're at, like, a red carpet, maybe, like, once every two months. But it's, like, aside from that, it's just business and business. In business, and you're just trying to keep everything, you're just trying to like raise your capital, and it's like, and you look, and sometimes you see that like there are people on the left who are like, fuck this, and fuck complaining about the people who are rich, you know, it's not their fault, or let's just do something ourselves, and you see them, and they're doing these crazy radical things that are like super like innovative, and you're like, I want to be a part of that, right? And so like, you might invest. Right? And when you invest and you put yourself out into these environments where like people aren't as well off as you, you start to see, okay, I could help these people. Right? And like just because they act like slobs sometimes, right? Or ungrateful, it's just because they're poisoned, you know, by poverty, right? And I kind of see like I remember a time, if I'm lucky, right? if I wasn't born into this lifestyle, right? Where I had to struggle my ass off. And I kind of remember what it's like to, to be like that and to be angry at the people who had things. So like, let me now devote my service to these people, you know, because I see their plight and I want to help them, right? And, and not only that, but I, I also want to be inspired by those people on the left who are doing crazy innovative things for, for, the, for like, you know, for the sake of like, improving the world and like doing cool things right you know you want to be part of that energy again you want to like oh i, I want to like i want to tr do cool things right so that's one example right you know i could talk about a lot of other examples like you know there's like the whole like men and women thing right you know there's like feminism like then there's like MGTOW, which is like men going their own way you know and it's like there's people on both sides who are like oh fuck them you know and it's like like, hey, man, you know, like, yeah, it's like, yes, it's, it's fucking annoying, right? You know, I'm sure that, like, for women, it's annoying when, like, men are, like, non-committal and they use brute, brute force sometimes to take advantage of women and they, like, they thrust women and they don't give them, like, uh, thrust, thrust women, ha <laughs> ha, like, they thrust women out of the competitive la landscape and, like, they criticize them for, like, you know, like, they need maternity leave and all this stuff and, like, women should have the same, you know, equal opportunities and it's like, yeah, you know, yes, they should, like, they should not be treated with disrespect, right, because they are as important as men are, right, in, in this society, in life, right, they're like, they're like halves of, you know, you know, of, of, of a whole, right? You know, similarly, like, as a man, like, I'm like, you know what? Like, I wish people understand how hard being a man is as well, right? Because it's like, you know, like, I, I just, I had a thought, it's like, so let me ask you a question. <laughs> it's like, if you saw a woman crying, right? If you just were just walking on the street and you saw a woman, like, just bawling her eyes out, how would you feel towards her? Now, take that feeling... And now imagine that you, you're walking on the street and you see a man bawling his eyes out. A full-grown man, not like an adolescent, like someone who's 30, right? Like, what would you feel, right? You know, I don't know, like, you wouldn't be without sympathy, right? But it's like, um, if you saw, like, you would be, you know, it's just like, it would be normal to reply that, like, you know, towards a woman, you would feel hella sorry for her, 
right? But the man who's crying and like, oh, I just, I'm just useless. I just don't, I'm not good at anything. I don't know what to do with my life. <laughs> I'm 30. I just like drinking in bars. And like, you're, and like what, whatever sympathy you had for him, like on first glance, you're like, oh my God, can you just grow up, please? You know, you're a man, come on, you can do something with your life. Like, it's not sympathy that you're feeling for him, right? And like, men feel this, right? And it's like, men have no sympathy. Or rather, like, they have relative, they have less sympathy than women have, right? And then there are other things, and like, women, like, even though, like, women, obviously, like, you know, women have problems with objectification of their sex, men have a similar problem with objectification in the sense that, like, you know, sometimes, a woman like flaunts her sexuality and like she gets the part or she gets the job and he's like fuck right you know and it's like both sides have their their beefs right and that's why they're angry at each other but it's like when you see when you when you see that like okay i as a man right like i'm going to take responsibility right because that's what i should do as a man right and like, I cry alone sometimes, right? Or like, get depressed. But like, I'm going to do the man thing of like, uh, like trying to figure it out. And I, I, I'm not perfect. I hurt along with all the other men out there. You know, it's hard, right? It's hard to like, when, when you're depressed and, and you're upset, to be like, I'm gonna be the man now. No feelings, I'm just gonna fucking succeed now, right? You know, it's like, men have feelings too, right? Men have feelings too. Um, but it's like, you know what? I'm gonna still do the man thing, right? And I'm, I'm gonna try to be a positive force in the society, which means that I need to stop like whining all the time. I can whine occasionally, like I can whine sometimes, right? But as long as I'm doing something like that's progressing me, right? So that I can help myself, I can help the people that I'm serving in my career, and I can help my family and friends, right? You know, and they can rely more on me and the, the responsibility can be diffused a bit. Right, like, you know, because like, we need to help each other, right? You know, and, and like, but like, and I will re respect women, right? Because I, you know, I see like, I'm like, I am a man am not better, better than any other woman, right? I don't see myself as better than any woman. I see myself as slightly different, right? Because you know, hey, like there are different expectations like towards both sexes in society, right? But like, you know, and, like, I respect that women should have a right to do what men do, right? You know, in the sense that, like, you know, if she wants to be a business person, right, she should be, she should do it, right? If she wants to be an artist, if she wants to be whatever, like, she should be able to do that. Because it's her, right? You know. And then, like, similarly, like, you know, and it's like, yeah, like, they, they can, you know, like, I, I, I know what women, women are capable of. You know, let's be honest, right? I know what they're capable of. I know what men are capable of. Like, both sexes have their tactics to wound and destroy the the kind of self-esteem of the other party. Like, they, they do, right? Both men and women, right? Men use brutality and, like, bullying. Women manipulate and, you know retract responsibility, right? You know, they both do it equally, right? So once we recognize that, and we recognize, okay, what are my expectations? What are my frustrations? You know, what do I not like about the opposite sex? But then what do I, what do I appreciate about the opposite sex? And you just think about everything holistically, then like, you can start to like, decide from there. Cause like, maybe you, you, maybe you're like, you know what? I realize that I, I'm not the right sex. No, fair enough, right? If you if you did that much digging, right, and you've you've entertained the thought enough to like be like I can I like without a doubt I know what like that this is the truth to me. Go for it, you know. But if you like, but but like, you need to think through it carefully, basically, right, you know, and come to your own conclusions. But you need to think about it, and you have to think about the opposite ideology, like, demographics point of view. So that you, like, so that you're not, like, in an echo chamber, basically. And it's like, it happens to me, like, this is the disclaimer. I do it all the fucking time. You know, I'm here preaching 
in all of my videos about how great you should be, right? But it's like, I'm fucking up all the time, right? So it's okay to fuck up. But like, it's just like, as long as we're mindful about it and we catch ourselves making the mis the, these mistakes and we just like, be honest, you know, about it, you know, and just, yeah, be honest about how we feel, what we think and discuss it, right? But anyway, fucking this hot. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can end this properly. So, so yeah, I, um, so yeah, I hope it's clear enough what my message is, right? Because, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big pitfall in today's world, you know, and it can really cause a lot of disruption, you know, and the bad kind of disruption, because it's like, Life is hard, right? And like, I make mistakes, everyone else makes mistakes. We get angry, we get frustrated. But it's like, at the end of the day, right, we all live in this world together, right? So like, let's, let's be honest, because that's the first step. Be honest about how you really feel. That you're angry at them. That like, you don't like them. Like the certain parts that they do, right? Be honest. You know, and like everyone has to be, right? You know, and if you if 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 you don't want to be honest, and like I don't know what to say to you, <laughs> you know, like you could, I guess there's nothing stopping you from from not being honest. But it's like, if you really care about like other people, you know, and this is coming from a closet narcissist, but like, like you should, like at least you can discuss honestly. Right, and then like try and move forwards, right? And like, I'll be honest, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. But like, I at least think about it. And I think about like how like, what my family's done for me, what my friends, a lot of them whom, whom I don't talk to anymore have done for me, what society does for me, even though a lot of it I see is just like, there's no hope, right? Like that's the thought I have. Like when I drive through like these parts of London and like even where I live, it's not the greatest place. And I'm like, oh my god, like, like, please give me some hope here. But like, it's like, okay, what does this mean for me? Right, this means that I just need to get more serious about what I'm doing. And also, I need to like, be more honest with myself. Right, and try to like, envision myself being more honest with other people. Because like, I haven't done it yet, let's be honest, right, you know. But like, the idea is that when I get back out there, then like, I'm going to, that, that's going to be my new, that's what I want to do, right? It's, it's like, be honest and, and go for, go for like connection and honesty as opposed to like, just like being guarded all the time because I'm hella guarded. I'm so guarded. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I hope that this entry was clear, right? It, it's a thing. It's like, it's the buzzword nowadays, ideological possession, but like, you know, yeah, that's the reason why, and this is what you can do yourself to prevent that. But like, I'm sure you already know, like, you know, anyone who's watching this, like I said, you already know, like, you've been through the gamut of like, you know, being identified one way and then realizing like how that way was, was toxic for not only yourself, but other people, you know, being hurt by it and then like kind of like having to piece yourself back together and then trying something else and then like, you know, having to like listen to other people's point of view and like it's hard initially, but then eventually you, you become more open because it's like, you know what, they're, they're right. You know, they are right in a way, right? You know, I'm right in my way and they're right in theirs, right? And like maybe I just need to be more open to what they say and like let, let's just kind of build together here, right? Kind of thing. But anyway, that's my entry. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and as usual, um, if you have any comments or anything like that, then feel free to leave them in the uh, description section below. And I hope you, you guys are doing well, and I hope that you are still going, still moving forwards. Um, yeah, I really do, as I, as I do myself. It's hard sometimes, but, you know, you're going through a phase, right? You know, that's, that's what I tell myself nowadays. It's like when I'm depressed, I'm going through a phase, because I've seen it before. And even though it's as painful as it always is, you know, you, you, you see it and then you just move. You're like, okay, let's just baby step it. You know, let me just take a step at a time. 
and then eventually I'll come out the other end and then I'll keep going. So I hope that you are continuing to go on your journey and continuing to believe in yourself. So cool. Um, until next time, guys, I hope you're having a good one. And uh, yeah, I love you. And uh, yeah, until next time, peace out.